So normally I hate tower defense games, but this one has got me arguing with my boss over who has the high score. It may look cute, but it's gonna kick your ass. Thronefall is a stripped back, minimalist, classic strategy game without any unnecessary complexity. Think Bad North with a mix of Clash of Clans. Build up your base during the day, defend it to your last breath at night, but don't be deceived by its cute, simple appearance. This game has hidden depths, which I'm gonna go into in three sections, coins, building, and aggro. In this game, like in life, you've got to carefully balance exactly what you're going to spend your coins on. In Thronefall, you have to decide between spending on defense, like towers, barracks, and walls, or generating more coin with houses, mills, and fields. It's a constant balancing act, as any buildings that generate coin that are destroyed in the night don't generate coin for the next day, which is what that little red X means. However, defensive buildings are more expensive and never generate any coin. You know, riding around with this fancy cape and on my horse, kind of wish I was a witcher, so somebody might at least throw me one more coin. So now we spent all of our coins, it's night time, when all the creepy crawlies come out and try and mess up that lovely new wallpaper we just installed in all the houses. The gits. So this game is so simple, your character by default will auto attack but weapons like the spear start to add a nice bit of complexity. The spear slows down fast enemies and the secondary attack heals you and increases your attack speed. This pairs really well with surrounding yourself with soldiers as you can slow down fast enemies, surround them with your troops, make sure you're the focus of the enemy attacks while your guys unload on them and then just as you're about to die, heal yourself and attack them even more. Obviously, these synergies you'll learn as you play, but I just wanted to give you an example of the tactical depth that is beneath the surface. There's little things that you'll learn and pick up. Like from the start, you'll realize to ignore the crossbowmen because they do not shoot fast enough. What are you, what are you doing? Shoot, shoot him. Now that you've survived the night, it's time to collect your coin to build or upgrade to prepare for the next night. Helpfully, the game will tell you what's coming that evening with these icons. So, for example, if you don't have any towers built in this area where a bunch of guys are coming from, maybe it'd be a good idea to spend some coin there. As you upgrade your castle, more building options on the map will appear. Now, the game dictating what you can build where seems like it's hand-holding or trying to make things easier for you, but it's actually restricting you massively. You can't build anything else that you don't get a choice. What is interesting is that it points out what is to come. Why are there barracks all the way away from the wall? Could it be that there's something that's gonna come across the river and try and kick my ass? So I need some barracks close by so I can defend myself. Why yes, why yes the game is going to do that right on the next turn. Fantastic. And now it's time to aggro. Okay, let's see how this goes. Right, let's go up here and get rid of these guys. So another thing that the game makes tricky is that you have no map or radar telling you where the enemy is. So you can be up here nicely cleaning up, then you come back down the map, but oh no, and the enemy's breaking through the bomb. Oh God, they're, you're, oh God, they're destroying my castle. Oh, da, da, da. Okay, cool. Time to do some damage and try and aggro these guys away from the wall and the cart. Come here, come here, come here. It's all, so it's all about distraction and aggro. You've really got to use your king to pull enemies away so that your tower can get that one more hit in that it needs. Um, some enemies don't seem to get aggroed like these ball things, which is absolutely terrifying. Um, it's like an older sibling who won't snap however much you goad them. Come on, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, but you can't catch me over here. Oh, you're no fun. Okay, I died, but that's okay. And it just makes you wait 10 seconds to respawn. Those 10 seconds can feel like ages when your town is getting torn apart. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on! Now that was a pretty close call, but the only building that truly matters is your castle. If that falls, then it is game over. All the other buildings, even if destroyed, come back in the morning. This presents another nice subtle tactic. Enemies are aggroed by buildings while making their way up to your castle. If you build a mill for three coins, you can also build fields for cheap at one coin each. These also generate one coin per turn, which initially seems like you've chosen to focus on the economy, but these mills and fields also work as a distraction for the enemy, giving your towers extra time to take them out. If any coin producing buildings get destroyed, they don't make any the next round, which is what that little red X means, but I think it's worth it. Anyway, you get the idea. The game looks cute and simple, but it's also got loads of tactical depth that definitely comes into play the further you get into it. There's a good tutorial, which isn't laborious, and you can play this with a controller as well as a mouse and keyboard. 
Here at FGS, we like to help you discover something new. So tap that subscribe button for more great games and recommendations on free demos just like Thronefall. Or head over here to watch seven useless video game mods you totally need.